Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to be talking about scale, which is one of the very foundational concepts in geographic information systems. It's the case that the planet is very large, but most of the space that we have to work in is very small. We either have to work on the surface of a desk, or on a laptop uh, computer monitor, or even on a monitor on the desktop, which is a little bit larger, but not much. Even if you're working on a big projection screen, you're still working on a surface that's much smaller than the actual Earth. So when we represent geographic phenomenon in a geographic information system, we have to represent that phenomenon at a particular scale. We represent it smaller than it actually is. So it's very important to understand scale because you're always going to be working at some kind of scale in geographic information systems and what scale you happen to be working at will have different ramifications uh, for different procedures and what kinds of procedures are suitable for certain different kinds of data uh, and many different aspects of your project. So it's very important to understand what scale is and how scale is communicated. And so the first thing that I want to talk about in regard to scale has to do with the globe again. So here is our globe we've been working with, and we said that it is a representation, it is a model of the Earth. The Earth is roughly spherical, this globe is roughly spherical, and so this represents a scale model of the Earth. This globe is obviously smaller than the planet. But what we would be very interested in knowing when we talk about scale is exactly how much larger uh, the Earth is than this globe, or how much smaller uh, this globe is than the actual planet. What's the relationship between the size of the planet and the size of this globe? So when we talk about scale, that's fundamentally what we're talking about. So let's see if we can figure that out. We were talking about the size of the Earth in a previous lesson, and we said that one of the numbers you need to keep in mind if you are a geographic information systems person or a person involved in geography more broadly is 40,000 kilometers, and that's the circumference of the Earth roughly. It's more like 40,075. Uh, so we know the circumference of the Earth, uh, how large the planet is. We can start to compare that to measurements on this globe and come up with a size relationship, a ratio. Now, as it happens, this globe that I have here uh, tells me how large it is uh, here on the side. Uh, this globe says 12-inch diameter globe. So we're actually using uh, inches here instead of the, uh, the metric measurements. Uh, so we'll just work with that. I don't have the circumference of this globe handy. Uh, I just have the uh, diameter of the globe, and it tells me this is a 12-inch diameter globe. So let's work with that. If the diameter of this globe is 12 inches, we'll need to compare the diameter of the globe to the diameter of the planet. So what's the diameter of the Earth? Well, since we've got the measurement of this globe in inches, we should use the imperial system for measuring the diameter of the Earth as well. So what's the diameter of the Earth in miles? Well, that's not a round number like 40,000 kilometers is the rough uh, approximation of the circumference of the Earth. Uh, the diameter of the Earth in miles is 7,918 miles. So not quite as round a number, but 7,918 miles in diameter. Okay, let's work with that and see what that tells us. Uh, that tells us that the 12 inches of diameter that we have here in the globe, 12 inches from here to here, has to represent, and that word represent is very, very important, 12 inches represents 7,918 miles on the real world. So the 12 inches that it takes to get from this side to this side as far as the diameter on this model has to represent 7,918 miles on the real planet. So already we are getting an idea of the size relationship uh, between the model and the actual Earth. Now one thing that you always want to do when you're calculating scale is make sure that both units that you're working in are the same. Of course you want to be using the same system of measurement, so we're using the imperial system because I get inches and miles, but it's very difficult to compare inches to miles. So what I want to do is convert the number of miles that the Earth is in diameter to inches. That way we'll have the same unit of measurement uh, on both sides. So how many inches is 7,918 miles? Well, I happen to have that right here, and that happens to be 501,684,480 inches. So 7,918 miles is 501,684,480 inches. 
So now we know that 12 inches on this globe must represent 501,684,480 inches in the real world. That number may not mean a whole lot to many people when you just say that out, because we're not used to working with that such a large number of inches. If you were, uh, we probably have a better cognitive understanding of how far 7,918 miles is uh, rather than 500 uh, million inches. But what is very important here is that now that you have inches on both sides, uh, you have 12 inches represents the 500 uh, million uh, inch number, Inches just cancel out, those drop off, and I'm left with just a numeric ratio. I'm left with 12 represents 501,684,480. This actually makes that scale a unitless measure, which is a fantastically useful thing for communicating scale. That now if I know that 12, 12 of some unit, okay, 12 of some unit on this model represents 501,684,480 of the same unit in the real world. So as long as I stick the same unit on both sides of that equation there, or both sides of that ratio there, I can make a true statement. You probably remember that from uh, high school mathematics. Okay, once you have the same unit on both sides, you can cancel them out. And then as long as you add back in the same unit, you can uh, create a true statement as well. That becomes very fantastically important, and we'll return to that uh, idea a little bit later. Uh, so once I have this 12 to 501,684,480, uh, I could put any unit on both of those sides and it would be true. It happens to be true that 12 centimeters on this globe would represent 501,684,480 centimeters on the actual planet. So that's what we're talking about when we're communicating scale, we're communicating a ratio. But there's one very important thing that we still have to do in order to make this a complete uh, and properly expressed scale. I don't want to leave that 12 represents some number of units. I want to say 12 units on this globe represent some number of units in the real world because that's very cumbersome for people. Okay, think of 12 inches on this globe or think of 12 centimeters on this globe and I'll tell you how many uh, inches or centimeters that 12 represents. That's very cumbersome and awkward. I would much rather just be able to tell someone that one of some unit, one inch, one centimeter represents some number of units uh, on, the, on the actual Earth. So I don't want to leave it 12. In order to properly express a scale, we always give it in terms of one unit represents some number of units in the real world. So if you remember back from all of your high school mathematics, well, as long as I divide both sides of this ratio by the same number, I still have a true statement. So if I've got 12 on one side, I can divide that 12 by 12 to get one, and then I can divide the 501,684,480 also by 12 and still derive a mathematically true statement about the relationship between this globe and the actual Earth. Uh, so if I divide 12 by 12, I get 1. And if I divide 501,684,480 by 12, uh, I happen to get 41,807,040. Okay, I get uh, 1 unit on this globe will represent 41,807,040 of the same unit, the same unit on the actual planet. And what I've done here is I've actually derived a representative fraction for this globe and its relationship to the planet. And a representative fraction, or RF, is one of the three ways that you can express scale, and it is the uh, predominant one that's used for communicating geographic information. So being able to understand scale in this particular format is very important. So I would say that the representative fraction of this globe, I would say the scale of this globe is 1, and then I would put a colon, except for that's read as 2, T-O. So the scale representative fraction is 1, 2, 41,807,040. The scale of this globe is 1, 
to 41,807,040. And that means uh, that one of any unit, one of any unit that I care to measure in on this globe will represent 41,807,040 of the same unit on the actual Earth. So if I were to pull out a, a ruler and measure one inch here, one inch would represent, one inch on this globe would represent 41,870,040 inches. There'd be exactly that number of inches between the two points represented uh, on the globe as one inch apart in the actual Earth, or on the actual Earth. I said any unit. Remember how we canceled inches out so it became a unitless measurement? Well, that allows me to add back in any kind of unit that I want. So it's also true, it's also true, once I've gone through here, that I can use that same scale for using metric measurements. I can say, perfectly completely true, that one centimeter on this globe, okay, represents 41,807,040 centimeters uh, on the actual planet. Uh, so, because it's unitless, you can add anything back in, and that's why one of these representative fractions are so useful com for communicating scale, because it doesn't uh, lock a user into a particular unit of measurement, it doesn't even lock them into a particular system of measurement. Once you've derived the ratio, it's true for any unit of measurement and any system of measurement. And we'll return to that point again when we talk about RFs and the different ways to communicate scale. Uh, I, I like to tell people it's even true, if you can communicate that ratio, uh, that an alien civilization, if some alien, you handed them this globe and you told them that the uh, uh, scale is uh, 1 to 41,807,040, they would be able to use even their alien unit of measurement. One of their alien unit of measurement will represent 41,807,040 of that same alien unit of measurement. And it's very important to uh, conceptualize this and sort of internalize this uh, when you're working with representative fractions uh, because I, I do have students who will get locked into a single unit of measurement. Uh, I'll be asking them to derive map distances in uh, miles and then uh, feet and then I'll change on them to kilometers uh, or meters. And some of them will then try to go through some very uh, difficult conversion, or at least uh, unnecessary conversion, from one system of measurement to another system of measurement and converting all the units because they get stuck using their scale in just a single system of measurement. Don't be one of those people. Go ahead and understand that when given a representative fraction, you can use any unit in any system that you want. We'll return to that point uh, in a bit when we talk about maps and not just globes. So the final thing that I want to tell you about scale in this globe is that it actually does tell me the scale of the globe on this globe. We just went through and performed the calculations, but we can check. We can say, what, do the manuf what does the manufacturer of this globe tell me its scale is? Uh, so over here it tells me exactly what the scale is, and it says scale 1 colon 41,807,040. So that is the scale of this globe. It communicated it as a representative fraction. 1 to 41,807,040. So we got our uh, mathematics right. We got the uh, scale conversion right. Ah, and that's exactly what it tells us. So when you look up uh, a globe like this and you look for the scale, you're wondering, hey, what is the scale? What is the size relationship between this globe and whichever one you're holding and the actual planet? You will look at it and you will find that ratio, that relationship, expressed as a representative fraction in the format that we just went over. So, pretty neat, huh? So, actually, when we're talking about maps, we're about to go on and start talking about maps instead of just globes, uh, oftentimes there are three ways that you uh, communicate scale. Well, you could use them to communicate scale about a globe, but very frequently you find scale communicated in three different ways when you're looking at a map. And a representative fraction, uh, like we've just looked at, is one of them that we'll look at in a little bit more detail as we go forward. Uh, all right, so let's go forward and look at three different ways that we can communicate scale information.